well, what a fantastic win and, and performance last night, the 4 1 win over Banbury. Yeah, yeah, really, well, really, another really good evening, actually. It's a bit tra- tra- traumatic to be entertained at Edgar Street, hasn't it, over the course of the last month, to be honest with you? It's just been. You know, great to see so many people smiling, so many people enjoying it. I thought last night we were we were outstanding, to be honest. I thought we started brilliantly um, in the first half. And Banbury looked a decent side to me in the first half as well, actually. They caused us a few problems without ever creating anything. But we scored a couple of great goals, some really good interplay and some great striking striking play by our front men, which was great to see. And um, obviously, second half maybe started a bit bit slowly and they always when they got the penalty you do get a little bit concerned but we reacted brilliantly to that and I thought we absolutely completely dominated the second half we could you know the four goals we did score didn't flatter us at all we could have doubled that tally I think to be honest and um, you do worry when there were a few chances being missed you do get that little bit of Hereford fan paranoia that it's going to come back and bite you but yeah we just kept ploughing on didn't we and we deserved the goals that we scored and it was great actually just all the lads that scored I mean, it's brilliant whoever scores isn't it but it was really good to see all the lads who scored get on the get on the score sheet I thought Kobe Arthur was absolutely outstanding last night for someone who hasn't played too much football and as Paul alluded to wasn't in the squad away on Saturday I thought he was absolutely fantastic it was you know it was lovely for him to have the opportunity to get substituted almost so everybody could show their appreciation that was I thought he was brilliant but you know everybody everybody was great again you just look around the team and there's a minimum of seven out of ten everywhere I think and Paul Downing coming back was nice to see as well great to have some some bodies back so yeah just a really good night and I must say you know that for a Tuesday night the the attendance of just over 2,000 was absolutely brilliant as well and again the atmosphere for a for a Tuesday night fixture was terrific. I know the the Banbury lads were. I think even the match officials commented on notice the atmosphere, which was which is really great to see. So, yeah, thank you to everybody who turned up. It was yeah, it was a really a really really good night. And the goal the goals flowed. We might you know our goal scoring stats might improve, Jamie, and we might people might stop talking about them. Yeah, well we're, we're on minus one now, so we're almost there, aren't we? Yeah, but- absolutely right. Typical Hereford fan, when the penalty went in, you think, oh, here we go again. But credit to the players, and I think their character this year is, you know, they just didn't let it affect them, and they went on and obviously got got the win. But, um, yeah, I think that's kind of the character that, that Paul's kind of instilled in the team, isn't it? Yeah, kind of, you know, they Banbury got that penalty and obviously got a, they were back in the game, and you thought it might kind of invigorate them, and then it was going to be a tough second half. But if... If anything, completely opposite happened. It really inspired our lads, and they just went on. You know, they went in search of the the third goal, and after knocking the door down or knocking on the door several times, eventually we got we got the one, didn't we? And actually, like I said, we could have gone on score, gone on scored more. And it was brilliant. We played some great football. You know, we mixed it up. We went we went direct on occasions. We went, you know, we played some intricate stuff on occasions, and it was just a it was just a brilliant all round performance. I thought, you know. I, Difficult to judge it, really, isn't it, against other performances? But certainly from an attacking perspective, it was it, it was really refreshing and really good to see. And I think, you know, you're getting a sense now of the team. We've said it for a little while, but the team's really settled. You know, is starting to settle down. There's a bit of consistency in terms of selection because hopefully the injury situation is getting a little bit better. As Paul's alluded to the fact that, you know, I think Rune said it as well in his post match that we've actually reached the point where we've actually left some people out of the match day squad, which has been yeah. which has been very unusual this season because we've normally been kind of desperately scrabbled around to make sure we've got five for the bench. But I mean it is it's been absolutely brilliant given given where we've come from in the summer and given the fact that we only had Mark Derricott really left from last year and you know it's been well publicized that the the budget was reduced given the financial the position the club's been in. I think you know where we've got to at the present time and you know clearly there's a long way to go but for Paul and his team of staff and the players to have got us to where we are currently is you know it's massive massive feather feather in all their caps and you know I think we've continued we've got to continue to be realistic about where we are and, and where we can go and what we can achieve but you know, Kidderminster proved last year. If you you're in and around it, come the new year, you know anything can happen really. And and certainly there are signs that we, you know, we're going to give anybody a game. And and you know, as I said, with all, with the handicaps that we've kind of, or the challenges that Paul's been faced with in his first job, given the budget reduction, 763 injuries in the first month, and losing both strikers in pre-season and all that type of stuff. I think, you know, massive pat on pat on the back. 
back to him and you know and thank you to the supporters who've really embraced everything that we've been trying to do as a club because I think that's making a huge difference as well in terms of the atmosphere both on and off the pitch. I know Paul says he doesn't look at the table but it's nice to be able to look up and rather than bang the table isn't it it's a comforting and I think it probably helps when the fans look at the table particularly now we're in the top half in you know 10th position it, it kind of helps with that kind of uh, excitement doesn't it? Oh yeah, I mean, I look, I saw your good friend Greg Davis had tweeted after the game on Saturday that yeah. if we'd have won one nil, we'd have been seventh. We lost one nil, and we were seventeenth. And I mean, that's just utterly ludicrous, isn't it? In fairness, and I and I'm sure lots of other people looking at the league table and saying the same thing. I mean, it's notoriously competitive this league, isn't it? But at the moment, it's just the most extreme version of competitiveness you've ever seen. And and in some ways, I suspect it, you know it's still early days, isn't it? We're probably only a third of the way through, aren't we? So. Things are still settling down. There's obviously a lot of teams at the moment in that blooming middle patch um, fighting it out. But, you know, we'll see how it develops over the next few months. And this is obviously quite a key period because there's about a million and one games in six weeks, isn't there? So um, it's a key period. But, you know, as it stands at the moment, we can't have any complaints about the way we're going. And there's a little bit of a break, obviously, this weekend. I'm sure we're going to move on to the FA Trophy game, which slightly, you know, less pressure in terms of the compared to the league. And it might give us the opportunity to just freshen things up a little bit but certainly it's an, it's an exciting time and um, it's nice to be going to Edgar Street with a bit of a sense of optimism and actually looking forward to what's going to be put on show for us. Yeah you mentioned the the, uh, the trophy game obviously we've had a lot of cup games at home which we kind of aware that everyone's got to put their hand in their pocket and dig deep and obviously we, we've met we've we've spoken about the prices for FA Cup games needing to stay as they are um, but we've made the decision, obviously, to reduce the prices for the trophy game. Um, we've also made that decision to shut the Len Western stand as well to try and kind of cut down on, on the cost. But um, firstly, I guess it's to reward the fans because they've been exceptional in, in recent months, atmosphere wise and in numbers, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. And, you know, we understand it's hard for supporters and we understand why we've been criticised in the past, maybe for the FA Cup games, for not reducing prices. But it's never a straightforward decision for us, but we looked at this FA Trophy game and given the number of home games we've had, and we've obviously been incredibly fortunate with home draws in cup competitions, it just felt like the right thing to do to try and reduce the prices, you know, for this fixture. We probably, you could argue we'd like to improve you know, reduce them more, but we still have to split the gate money with Redbridge in the same way that we do in the FA Cup. Even with shutting the Lem Western stand, which does help us in terms of the cost of hosting the game, we've still got some decent sized expenses that we have to meet and that sort of stuff. But yeah, just to be able to not, I think three pound off the prices across the board for people, I think it's, I think it's the, it's the right thing to do, and it's something that we wanted to do. And as you say, we understand the position supporters are in, and if this just helps a few more people come through the gate and come and enjoy the football on the Saturday afternoon, then we'll be absolutely delighted because you know if we can. You know, the early rounds of, you know, the FA Cup and the FA Trophy aren't particularly well supported traditionally. But, you know, the more that come through the gate, the more of an atmosphere there is. And, and you know, and it'll help our team. So, yeah, so it is a thank you to supporters. Don't want to make a big thing of it because, it you know, it is the right thing to do, really, um, as well. But, you know, we, you know, we have put it out, we have put it out there and it is just it is a gesture to supporters. And in terms of shutting the then Western stand, I guess it's a almost an apology and a, uh, for, the, for the inconvenience, really, for, the, for those fans in the Lem Western. You know, we, we appreciate that they kind of turn, turn up week in, week out. Um, it's nothing personal against them, but it's, um, you know, one of the areas where we can say, you know, just to open the Lem Western stand both ends, it's kind of probably, well, definitely 10 to 12 stewards. So it, it kind of cuts down on that cost. Um, We've had some positive feedback about it. Um, we've, we've had one or two kind of little moans as well, which we totally understand. Um, you know, I've, I've applied to a couple and, and basically said that we've, we've got to try it because, um, you know, we, we're not afraid to try new things if it, if it means that we can kind of maximise our revenue um, and reduce our costs. But also, if it doesn't work, we're not going to be afraid to kind of make a dif different decision next time as well. Yeah, like, like a lot of decisions that you you have to make, it's a balancing act, isn't it? Actually, by doing that, you know, and you know, and we're very sympathetic to those people who are affected and are unhappy. But actually, if there are a small number unhappy, 
but it may well benefit a much larger number in terms of the three pound reduction that we're able to then offer as a result of it. So it is a balancing act. You know, you're never going to satisfy everyone. You're never going to please anyone, everyone when you're making decisions. But, you know, again, we think it's the right thing to do. We're going to try it. We obviously wouldn't do it for a league game because people have got season ticket seats in there. The advantage with a cup game is actually you would have to buy your seats anyway, anyway. So it's not as if you're taking away someone's seat that's definitely there for that game. So, yeah, it's one of those things. Like I said, we, we completely understand why a small number of people may be unhappy about it, but it's it's not a personal thing to anybody. It is just, again, thinking almost for the greater good is is the way we're having to look at it. And that's why the decision, and I, I, you know, I'm confident it is the right decision, but if it turns out not to be, <laughs> we can change we can change our mind, as you say. And we have made other little decisions like fans will have noticed maybe last night and for the Brackley game and for a couple of other games this season, we haven't opened the away terrace. So we just housed all the away fans up in the... Um, up in the seats, which which helps reduce our stewarding costs on that front as well. So we are trying kind of uh, as much as we can just to reduce those costs. But yes, a thank you to the fans, I guess, in the Lem Western. The overall reaction has been quite positive, but we do appreciate that we're kind of causing quite a bit of inconvenience. But we we hope that they'll they'll come over to the Merton stand for a game and um, you know be back in the Lem Western then for the for the league games coming up. Yeah, well, well, yeah, one hundred percent, and uh, you know, we just, you know, we just want people to turn up, don't we, as much as possible. We try and look after people as, as best we can. You know, we sometimes have to make decisions without taking into account that it might cause a bit of disruption and a bit of a, a stir because you have to try and make a decision and almost part the emotion sometimes from a board's perspective. But um, yeah, generally, I, I think people have been really, you know, responded really well to the changes that we've tried to make. So yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so again, sorry for any convenience to anybody that is affected and is unhappy. But as I said, it is it is for the greater good, and 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 we can review the decision afterwards. And we've got a a, a trio of back to back home games coming up at the end of the month and the start of December as well. Um, which ticket sales? Well, I'm hoping to get those all online today, actually. So the the one, the big one in in the middle is is the Scunthorpe game, and I know they're hoping to bring um quite a few fans so it should that should be a really good atmosphere and something to look forward to yeah no it's funny isn't it we've had obviously we played Rochdale and Gillingham in the FA Cup which felt a bit like old school football league yeah. fixtures and Scunthorpe United at home is is kind of a similar ilk isn't it you know though I suspect they're rightly they're rightly the favourites in most people's eyes you know to be pushing at the very top of the league but again I think they've probably found that in this ridiculously daft league anything could happen obviously they I think they lost to Kings Lynn last night didn't they and I think and yeah. um so it just it just shows that anything can happen on any given day but you know it'd be one to look you know a really good fixture to look forward to and it, you know it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you say when you have a good number of away fans and a good away following it does massively add to the atmosphere on the day so I'm really yeah really looking forward to that one and I'm sure all the supporters are and uh well yeah it should be a really good day but obviously either side of that we've got Scarborough and Warrington as well so big old big old week that one Jamie Griffiths you'll be as busy with all the staff as ever I'm sure yeah most definitely I think I might just move my bed here for the for that week and uh yeah make make do a bit but um obviously things are going well on the pitch at the moment for the first team but also extremely well for the women's team this season as well isn't it yeah I was talking to John Nash last night he was absolutely buzzing about their win on Sunday they went to lie on lie town ladies on Sunday who who earlier in the season I think had come to Edgar Street and beaten us 6-0 and we we went there on Sunday and won 3-0 and inflicted their first league defeat of the season with a 3-0 win and Nash he's, Nash you could tell he was absolutely buzzing about the performance I saw I saw Millie as well and asked her about it and she couldn't wait to expand on the scoreline and what I got on him so so yeah ab- absolutely absolutely brilliant it's great that we can you know that we've been able to give them the opportunity to play Edgar Street for their home games this you know this year because not all I don't think all women's teams get the opportunity to play at their first team ground which has been absolutely brilliant and they're making they're making great progress when you consider this is their sort of first proper season in this league and that sort of stuff I had a look at the league table this morning and they're sitting quite nicely in second place at the moment and you can Stourbridge and I think Lyre first and third who've clearly got a lot more experience um, in that league and that sort of stuff so yeah no it's, it's really good really exciting and we've obviously put out an advert 
for um, sort of a volunteer media officer because we would like to try and give them more coverage if we possibly can across our website and our platforms and that sort of stuff so if anybody wants to step forward and wants to help us out doing that it'd be absolutely brilliant because we really do want to promote them as much as they can because they are an, they are an important part of the football club moving forward yeah most definitely and obviously it's their first season but it's a it's a really young side as well so i think nashi's really pleased with how they're all kind of coping with it when they're up against teams that have got experienced players that have been playing for years and um you know our, our young young side is uh more than more than competing with them but just going on that volunteer role um we've had a couple of applications we're still kind of open to anyone that wants to get involved really but we're not limiting it to one person if there's if there's a few people that want to share that responsibility it'd be great but yeah we, we're very aware that we need to really shout about the success on for the women's side as well so if anyone's interested you know photographer video social media just writing match reports, anything like that, you know, any help would be really appreciated. So um, I know Toby, our media officer, obviously Sunday's kind of his one day off a week. So, uh, you know, he he could do with any support he could he could uh, get really. So, yeah, um, anyone interested, just drop us a line and we'll uh, try and sort something out. Yeah, no, actually, I'm just going to wanted to touch on actually the media side of the club, because I think it's fair to say that 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 Toby is, you know, is really doing a great job in terms of all the social media presence that we've got in the moment. And obviously our our, our merry band of photographers of uh, Nibbo, Andy Walkton and, and Craig are doing a fantastic job with all the with all the, the snaps and everything for all our games. They're really, really good, really good team. And, we, you know, we're incredibly blessed to have such a committed group of people following the club round, helping us out and that sort of stuff. And obviously managed by Toby, who's been looking after the looks after the programme and the website and the social media channels. And he's been asked to do a lot of marketing stuff now for off-field things. I mean, it's just, you know, a word of praise to him, obviously, and and all the other staff. But I just thought it would seem to quite a, a good moment just, just to sort of say what a good job they're all doing. And we're so, you know, you look at, I know other clubs don't necessarily have the fan base that we have, but you look at some of the other service provided and, uh, you know, ours is just absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, they're doing, everyone's doing a great job. Well managed by that general manager who himself no. appears to be doing a half decent job as well. Yeah, occasionally. Um, you know, we're, we're really proud of all our staff and volunteers and it's worth saying we had a couple of emails after the Gillingham game from Gillingham fans praising our stewards up in the away end. Um, you know, a couple of Gillingham fans saying that they go home and away all over the country and that our stewards are, are some of the best there so a, a big pat on that back for for the stewards um in the away and for the Gillingham game because it's really nice to have those that positive feedback yeah was it and it was it was it the, was it a brack was it a photographer from brackley who was raving about the directions he was given by a steward to a petrol station because he was definitely <laughs> after yeah. when he was leaving the when he was leaving the ground he knew his light was on and he got the best he got the best directions to a petrol station he's ever received so yeah <laughs> so yeah no it is really it is really pleasing to see that type of that type of feedback and i actually so there was a comment about our highlights on saturday's game from boston yeah. as well there was a positive comment about the highlights the back, package that was put out so yeah again pat on the back to everybody at the moment I think there's a I feel like there's a lot to be proud of with the club at the moment and and you know and long may that long may that continue so thank you to everybody who's playing playing their part no matter how big no matter how small yeah we, we've made quite a few changes kind of behind the scenes that some some obvious to notice some probably less so but but the, the staff and the volunteers behind the scenes have, have been working really really hard um, this season so yeah well done to all of them yeah, and I yeah, we're, we're blessed. We're blessed to have the people helping out, out that we do. Clearly, we'd always love more people. We can always find a use for people. We can always, I don't use the word exploit. It doesn't sound quite right, does it? But we can always, we can always take advantage of people who want to help out. But yeah, to each and every person that you know plays some part in keeping our club moving forward. I'm almost like keeping the wheels on, but keeping the club moving forward anyway. You know, thank you from yeah. myself and the board and, and everybody involved. And whilst we're saying thank yous, it's probably worth mentioning or thanking Dorleys because obviously everyone knows Dorleys as our front of shirt sponsor, but we've also got um, a really kind of blossoming partnership with them where they're helping with our marketing and our email campaign. So hopefully fans will have noticed an improvement in the communication via email and, and that's kind of come from Dorleys. Uh, James and Luke in particular at Dorleys are, are really good and um providing a lot of support with our kind of our database our crm and 
and getting those emails out. So a big thank you to Dorley's. It's it's not just the front of shirt sponsorship that that we benefit from with them. It's um kind of expertise and and help and support as well behind the scenes. So yeah, a thank you to them. I think that's quite important to to say. They as an example, they sent a shop email out the other week, and immediately we we see a, an increase in the sales of of kind of the, the winter stuff, the scarves and the hats that were in that email. So yeah, big thank you to them. Yeah, 100 percent And that's the thing, isn't it? We know we the sponsors are vitally important in terms of the, you know, the financial support they offer us. But actually, if we can form proper partnerships with people that's beneficial to both ourselves and our sponsors, then that's exactly what we, you know, that's what we should be looking to do. And as you say, Dawl is, you know, I've been absolutely great as a shirt sponsor over the over the last few years. But actually, this the increase you know, in the work and relationship that we've got with them this year through the, you know, through the likes of what you've done and George has done and Martin Brain has done has been, yeah. it is fantastic. And those emails come through now and I receive them like everybody else does on a Thursday or a Friday. And it's just like, this is, this is so good actually to keep people informed. And I know, I know heading towards Christmas and you've got, um, you know, you've been shopping in inverted commas, haven't you, for for new lines through the shop for the shop and that sort of stuff. So, yeah. you know, they're going to that that'll be really important for us as we try and sort of take advantage of the Christmas season and that sort of stuff. Yeah, and it's worth actually mentioning that we're hoping to get the the the, the next batch, the next order of replicas should hopefully be here, Touchwood, kind of the first week or two of December. So hopefully just in time for Christmas. So yeah, I know we're we're out of stock on a number of sizes of the home shirt, but. Um, they are they have been on order for for a number of weeks and they should be here kind of soon hopefully perfect i shall try and keep my children out of the club shop as best i can in the build up to christmas <laughs> yeah definitely, yeah um i think we're we're trying to keep this one short and sweet today yeah we failed miserably we, we failed miserably on we felt and visibly everyone. there, didn't we, in fairness? But there you go. Yeah. It's good. It's good. There's been plenty to talk about, which has been really, really good. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I better let you go and put all those tickets, all those tickets for another million, one, million and one home games online and get them sorted, hadn't I? Yeah, that's that's really good fun, that is. But um, And tidying up after last night as well. It's, uh, of course. I walk in and my desk is more covered than normal. So, yeah, I've got to do a little bit of delving to find where my laptop is. I did chuck. I have to say, I did chuckle to myself when I was just stood on the side of the pitch talking, like, talking to the manager after the game, and looked into the tunnel area. And there's Jamie Griffiths with the biggest broom you've ever seen sweeping out the tunnel area. Oh, you know? my JCB, my JCB broom. Oh, it's it. massive. Honestly, you could sweep. You, you could. It's like this. It's like a ten meters. Triggers. It makes triggers broom on only fours and horses look tiny. It's like a ten. <laughs> it's like a ten meter. It's got a ten meter width. That broom, Jess. It's, it's top yeah. that is. I really like my JCB broom. Yeah. It went missing for a couple of months. I was I was sad, I, honestly. I was delighted when it turned back up again. So, I yeah. bet you were. I can imagine. The small wins, Jamie, the small wins. Yeah, brilliant. Cool. Well, see you Saturday, I guess. Yeah, look forward to it. Yeah, thank you, mate. Take Ta-da. care. Bye. Bye. Bye.